OK, now, we're getting uh, somewhat close to the end tonight, and it has felt like an extremely long night. But um, uh, I'll just uh, get one last comment from our panellists uh, um, in terms of what's happened. And uh, just looking at, uh, at, at what our uh, computer prediction is saying, it's obviously basing... It is predicting um, 25 seats for Labor and saying that Labor on that basis can form a government. That's obviously based on, A, the seat of Bright, yep. uh, which is very lion ball. And, uh, and, I mean, the computer doesn't just pluck these things out of the air. It, uh, it's got a very fine set of comparisons that it makes with past elections and so on. Um, but, uh, but perhaps the, the electoral, the, the postal votes are beyond computer prediction. So they say uh, Bright is one for Labor. Both you two are acknowledging that uh, we might be a week mm -hmm. before we know the outcome yep. there. The other seat that they're saying is the seat of Hartley. Um, you're quite conf reasonably confident of Hartley. You're... Um, Cautiously oh, optimistic. Cautiously. <laughs> <laughs> no, pessimistic. pessimistic. Yeah, Look, I, th I think you've I, sort of edged back towards the yeah, pessimistic. Yes, I think I one. have. Look, uh, I think Labor are the favourites in Hartley, but we did claw back from 1.5% to 3.8%. We've still got a margin to go. So it'll be an outside chance for us to win Hartley, but uh, the reason why both leaders haven't conceded is it's in play uh, because uh, Hartley always goes down to the wire uh, and uh, the postal votes in the past have helped us. Uh, in Bright, it's absolutely up in the air. And as I said also, whilst it doesn't affect the government's position, it does affect our position. I think Mount Gambier is still in play as well. OK. Well, look, uh, uh, if I was a sadist, I'd try and keep you here, knowing that you've already <laughs> witnessed your colleagues with a beer in their hand. But, uh, <laughs> but we, we will let you go now. And I'd like to... Th for what has been an extremely tricky night to try and pick trends and certainly pick outcomes. Uh, Rob Lucas uh, and... Uh, Kevin uh, Foley, thank you both very much for joining us tonight. Well, thank you, Kerry. Thank and, you. Uh, you know, these are nights of mixed emotions for Rob and I and for our colleagues, and um, it's been an extraordinary night. And thank Certainly you for has. a great job comparing again, and Good maybe see you next year. OK. You. Next year. <laughs> next four <laughs> years. Four years. Four years, I apologise. There, there's a tip for you. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to, very shortly, we're going to cross to Anthony Green in Tasmania just for a very quick update on what's happened there, because that's been another fascinating uh, outcome. But uh, before we do, we're going to just have one more uh, summary of the night. And we've had 72.9... Uh, 72.8% 72 of the vote counted, uh, which shows a 7.9% swing from Labor to Liberal in two-party percent terms. But as we've said many times, that has not trans translated uniformly at all. It's been a very different pattern in different seats. Uh, so, therefore... Where 7.9% in uniform terms would have meant a hung parliament at least, uh, it does not yet in this case. And that in two party percent terms means that uh, the Liberals have scored 51.1% of the vote, Labor 48.9% of the vote, but with that 48.9% uh, are slight favourites to be able to form government in their own right. If we look at the, uh, at the uh, ABC's uh, scoreboard, uh, we show that Labor, and I've, I've said we show Labor with 25%, but there's got to be a question mark alongside that. Uh, Labor, we're saying, have lost three seats. Liberals have lost four seats. Uh, Liberals have gained four seats. Uh, one of those four seats was Carlene Maywell's seat. One seat in doubt. And, uh, uh, Dean, can we take a quick look at the uh, statewide trends? Yes, I think we have to, as a last chance to have a look at those statewide trends. Uh, it's a repeat repetition for people who've been here all night, but for those of you just coming home, there is a big swing in first preference votes against the Labor Party. It's been translated to a big swing to the Liberal Party. The minor parties haven't played a large role in this in terms of swings. It's been a clear decision in people's minds to go from Labor to Liberal or Liberal to Labor. So I think we can see it in those terms. If we look after that at the Chamber, these are the predictions. Uh, the seats won, sorry, these are the seats won. 25 seats, the computer is claiming. As Kerry explained, we're, we're not so sure about that. Liberal, 13, and others, 3. Looking at the seats predicted, you can see 25, 18, 4. That is a Labor majority of 3. But the two seats of Hartley and Bright, I think we have to keep in the in-doubt section. So don't take that prediction as, as completely right. Now... Looking at some of the, uh, the changing seats. Norwood has been lost by Vinnie Ciccarello and won by Stephen Marshall. The Liberal Party has won that with a 9% swing. 
Uh, it's a major, major change because Nord was held by Vinnie Ciccarello for a long time. Turning to the next one, Moriarty. This is a seat where, which was predicted by a poll halfway through the campaign to have shown a 10% swing against Lindsay Simmons of the Labor Party. In fact, the night produced a 12% swing. John Gardner has been elected to uh, be the member for Moriarty in a very big swing. Turning to the next seat, Chafee. This is uh, the surprise, I think, for many people. Carleen Maywald had a battle on her hands <coughs> simply because she held that very tough portfolio of, of Murray Darling Water. Uh, it's clear that Tim Whetstone, who also has a very close connection to irrigation industry, is the one who uh, captured the imagination of the majority of, of the uh, people in Chafee. A 19.4% swing to the Liberals. Tim Whetstone's the new member. Now the surprise. A surprise, I think, to everybody, certainly here on the panel. Adelaide, which you would call a, a safe, safe Labor Party seat, uh, was faced a 15.2% swing to the Liberal Party, one of the biggest in the state. Rachel Sanderson has won the seat for the Liberal Party and uh, Jane Lomax-Smith is, is the loser in this situation, but a very big swing indeed. This is still a doubtful seat. It's a seat which normally the Liberal Party would say was definitely ours. Rory McEwen was an independent. Once he retired, uh, it was more likely that it would go to the Liberal Party. But Don Pegler, who is a local, a mayor of uh, ex-mayor of the Grant Council, is doing extremely well. There's a 7.4% swing to Don Pegler as the independent, and it's too close to count. Uh, I would be still saying this is in the doubtful category. Turning okay. now to yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to actually take a very quick look again at the seat of Bright, uh, which the computer is giving to Labor, but we're saying is doubtful. Well, I, I think the computer really is saying tending towards Labor. It, it has a habit of doing that. It chickens out on some of these seats, but uh, I think even say tending towards Labor is just too much, because in first preference terms, it's 44% to 42%. You might think, well, you know, that's well, pretty, pretty good for the Liberal Party. But once the preference is distributed, after a 6.2% swing, it is 50-50. So I wouldn't give this... I'm sorry, computer, you can put Chloe Fox back level with the others as well on that photograph thing. Uh, I'm going to say it's too close to call. It will depend, could be, on the last handful of postal votes. OK, now, before we close for the night, we're just going to cross very quickly to Tasmania where Anthony Green, our election analyst, is standing by. He's been covering that uh, election tonight and that's been a fascinating one too. In fact, uh, very dramatic. Anthony Green, give us a quick summary if you would. Good evening, Kerry. Well, there's about 30 people here gagging for a drink at the moment, but we'll, let's do this. <laughs> We've got the... Only if the you want to. I, I, wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to force you. That's all right. It's been a long night. The Tasmanian election has produced the hung parliament, as everybody expected. We've got the overall votes here, um, hopefully on graphics. What we're seeing is that the, the news poll was relatively correct, though it slightly overestimated the Green vote. The Labor Party's 37%, down 12. The Liberals on 39, up 7. And the Greens on 21.3, down 4.5%. Now, that is translating at this stage into a parliament, which we're predicting looks like 10 10 5, the hung parliament that everybody predicted. The Liberal Party have definitely got a slightly higher vote than the Labor by about 2%. But at this stage, it may well be, depending on a cut up in the last three seats, the Liberal Party may not get to 10 and that the, they may lose the last seat in one of the key electorates. But at this stage, there's a lot of negotiation to go on about how government will form. Um, it's going to be an interesting parliament when it meets, but uh, it's a week and a half before they can do preference distributions. So it will be interesting to see how the final numbers look, but 10 10 5 looks like the best estimate at this stage of the night. And in fact, a, uh, a potential nightmare scenario for uh, whoever does form the government. Well, yes, it's certainly hard to see how this parliament will last the full four years. Um, whoever forms government is going to have to sort of work with both the opposition and the Greens on the cross benches on a whole variety of issues. And you can't see how issues like Tasmanian forest agreements are going to be debated in the parliament when you've got three parties, um, any two of them can combine to bring down the other in government. Mm. And uh, there's been plenty of history of that in the past. Anthony, thanks very much for that. Thank you very much. And uh, that brings us to the end of our coverage for tonight. It has been a long night and it has been an intense night. And uh, there's a lot more to come over the next few days, possibly as much as a week, maybe even more. Uh, Dominic Schwartz, uh, thank you very much for your contribution to the coverage. And uh, Dean Gench, thank you. thank you too. And also to those ABC people who work behind the scenes uh, to bring this coverage to air. These are 
amongst the most difficult uh, broadcasts in the television industry. Believe me, there's so many nuts and bolts and so many elements to be brought together to make it work. Uh, and uh, it has been a difficult night to try and keep tabs on what's going on. Thank you too for joining us. But for now, good night.